You're watching 345. I'm Jason Van Lu, and this is Level 1. With HTML5 and CSS3, you can code up those websites functionally. We all know the secrets, now you can know too. So come on down and join Professor Jason Van In this level, we're going to talk about HTML5. Now, as you probably know, HTML5 is the newest version of HTML and XHTML. Now, as we were developing this course, a large debate came up about whether or not to call it HTML5 or just plain old HTML. In fact, the What Working Group, the original creators of the HTML5 spec, came out and said that we should call it just HTML. Well, a lot of people still like to refer to it as HTML5 to differentiate between previous versions of HTML. So what are we supposed to do? We're creating this course on HTML5, and they go and change the name on us. So you say HTML5, I say HTML. In the words of Louis Armstrong, should we just call the whole thing off? Well, no, I don't think so. You see, eventually we'll probably call this HTML. But for the purposes of this course, we'll go ahead and refer to it as HTML5 so that we don't confuse folks. And because, well, we're just cool like that. So what's the big deal about HTML5? Well, we have some awesome new elements like new semantic tags, canvas, rich media, and more. For the purposes of this course, we're just going to focus on the semantic tags. We'll also hit canvas and some of the rich media pieces later on in the course. So in HTML5, we have some new tags on the block. In 2005, Google conducted a survey of over 3 billion websites in which they studied the most common ID and class attributes that web designers and developers used to name their HTML elements. And their findings became the basis for the new HTML5 spec. So as we look at some of the new tags for HTML5, this obviously isn't an exhaustive list, but it's some of the more widely used tags, and it's what we're going to be focusing on in this course. First, we're going to start with the doc type and the head elements. Now, if you're like me, I copied and pasted the doc type hundreds of times in websites. I mean, who remembers this? Well, it's nice in HTML5 for lazy designers like myself because it gives us a very simple and easy option. I can remember this. I can even type it with my own hands if I want to. Moving on to the HTML root element, this also gets much more simplified in HTML5. So instead of writing something like this, we can write something like this. Also in the head elements, our character encoding gets a lot easier. So instead of writing something like this, all we need to define is this, and it's the same exact thing. And then also, when we look at our links, we no longer have to include the type attribute. So instead of needing to type text CSS or text JavaScript, we can go ahead and leave that out. So our link elements look like this, relative to style sheet, and then the actual link URL. So let's first take a look at our header element. Now, the header tag in HTML5 is defined as a group of introductory or navigational aids. Now, we all know what a header is. We've been using it in all of our sites. It's usually the top portion of your site, and it includes the standard branding elements, logo, tagline, and maybe some key call to action elements as well. So previously, we might have mocked up the header something like this, div ID header with an H1 OMG look at the zombies. Now, this is still valid HTML. It works perfectly. But in HTML5, we now have the option to organize this a little bit better and more intuitively. It might look something like this, where we add our header tags, keep the H1. Now, the nice thing about the HTML5 header tag is we're not limited to its use just once in a page. We can use this multiple times. So previously, with our div ID header, we would only be able to use that once. Now, with the new header tag in HTML5, as long as we have a contained element in the page, we can have a header section for that if we want it. So let's say we have a section ID zombie family, and we'd like to have a header in that. It's perfectly fine. We can just add our header tags, add an H1, we are family, and that's semantic markup. Let's also say we wanted to add a tagline. So in addition to the we are family heading, we wanted to say all your brains are belong to us. We can do this and even organize this more effectively by including an H group. And basically what this is, is just a nice grouping of related information within a header tag. So let's move on now to the nav tag. The nav tag in HTML5 is defined as a section of the page that links to other pages on the site or to other sections of that particular page. 
duh, we all know what a navigation item is. So the nav tag is basically just a navigation area. In this particular example, with Frank Chimero's site, we all know that the top right portion is the main navigation area. But let's say we have a section of the site, maybe in a sidebar, that also has a grouping of links. How can we tell if this is a navigation section or just a grouping of links? HTML5 makes this a lot easier because now we can define the nav tag. So previously, we might have marked up something like this, div ID navigation with our unordered list and our navigation items within that list. Now with HTML5, we can replace our divs with the nav tag, and now we know that that section is a navigation section. So next, let's look at the section tag. The section tag in HTML5 is defined as a grouping of content based around a theme. Now, sometimes your section elements can replace your div elements, maybe more of your high-level organizational divs, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to replace all of your divs with sections. A section also must be able to stand alone. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have a section of our site called ACC Basketball News. Previously, we might have marked up this section, like so. Div ID equals ACC News. And we have a title, ACC Basketball News, a subtitle, UNC Beats Duke in the championship game, and then our paragraph content. So how might we mark this up in HTML5 using the section tag? Well, we could add the section tag in place of our div tags, and now we can also add our header tag as well, because remember what we talked about before with our ability to use the header tag in multiple sections of the site. So in this case, ACC Basketball News is the title of this section, so we can include that in our header tags. We can also change the H3 to an H2, UNC beats Duke in the championship game, and our paragraph copy stays the same. Same content, marked up semantically and effectively in HTML5. So now let's look at the article tag. The article tag in HTML5 is defined as an independent, self-contained composition. These could be news posts, magazine articles, user comments. It's pretty straightforward. The article is essentially an article, a news posting, something like that. Now, what's the difference between an article and a section? It's a question I hear a lot. And a section can contain multiple articles. Remember, a section is a grouping of related content, whereas an article is independent. So let's look at our example again our div ID ACC news with our title and paragraph copy. And if you remember, when we changed it to HTML5, we added our section tags and our header tags. In this case, we've also added article tags as well. So now we can group our content, UNC beats Duke in the championship game, and our paragraph content within that article. Now notice also, we've also included more header tags. In this case, the header for this particular article is UNC beats Duke. So now we have two sections of header tags within this entire section element, and that's perfectly okay, perfectly semantic. Andy Clark, in his book Hard Boiled Web Design, has a pretty good quote to help us to define what an article is. He says, one way to check if article is the most appropriate element is to see if an article's content makes sense on its own. For example, would it make sense on its own when viewed in an RSS reader, like Reader for the iPad? So as you're thinking through your content and working on your markup, this is a good quote to keep in mind. If you're wanting to define something as an article, does it work in, say, a standalone RSS reader on your iPad? It's a good question to ask yourself. So the next tag is the aside tag. The aside tag is defined as content related to an article, but not critical to its understanding. So this might be those golden nuggets of useless information that you bring up at dinner parties, such as the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow. It could also be pull quotes, call outs, those kind of things. So let's go back to our example. Remember our article here, UNC beats Duke in the championship game. Our paragraph copy, the Blue Devils are routed by the Tar Heels. Now we can include an aside within this article that says former Duke players cry at game's end. Now this isn't essential to your understanding of the actual article, but it's just information that helps spruce up that article. This is a good example of how an aside might be used. Finally, the last tag that we're going to look at is the footer tag. Now, the footer tag is defined as a section that includes information that closes out a particular section of the page. Now, just like the header, we all know what a footer is. Footer, though, in HTML5, doesn't have to be only at the bottom of the page. 
Just like the header tag, you can use the footer tag in multiple areas of the site. You can add this tag to any containing element to close out that section. Let's look at our example again. So in this example, this is how we might have previously marked up a footer section. Div ID footer with our H3 talk to me goose and then our paragraph copyright information Maverick and Goose Ventures. So how, how might we change this into HTML5 markup? Well, we would add our footer tags in place of our div tag and we would keep the content the same. Now additionally, remember that I mentioned that we can use the footer tag in multiple areas of the site, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be at the bottom of our page. So let's say that we have a section with a header top gun, and we have our paragraph, he's too close, I'm switching to guns. We can add a footer to this section, highway to the danger zone. Perfectly semantic markup, and it allows us to better organize our information on our page. So that's just a brief overview of some of the more widely used HTML5 tags. Now again, as I mentioned, this isn't an exhaustive list. We're actually going to be covering a couple of more tags as we go through the course. So we have all of these great new features in HTML5, but the question remains, how usable are these features? When should we start to use them? Well, the answer to that question is right now. Now when it comes to HTML5, really all it is is an extension of previous versions of HTML. It just builds on what already is there and what already is working. So your HTML4 code is still valid in HTML5. That's a big deal because it means that all of your old elements still are going to work in HTML5. Essentially, HTML5 is just building on what's already there. How do we know which browsers support HTML5? Well, the big three already do, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. Also, the latest versions of Opera, and believe it or not, Internet Explorer 9 support HTML5. But alas, our old foe, Internet Explorer 8 and below, currently don't support HTML5. So what do you do? Well, depending on who your target market is and who you're building the site for, you might be able to get away with not supporting IE8 and below, but chances are you're probably going to have to support some of those earlier versions of the browser. So what do you do? Well, Remy Sharp created this pretty awesome little script that enables HTML5 elements in browser versions earlier than Internet Explorer 9. So all you would do is you would enter this script in your head element and basically what this says is if a user is in a browser earlier than Internet Explorer 9, cue this script and your HTML5 tags will work. All of the other browsers, Firefox, Safari, etc., they're just going to ignore this code and we're good to go. So that's an overview of HTML5. Now it's time for you to apply what you've learned and get coding.